Greetings and salutations, this is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado, and another episode of Not Alone, Screwer Guy. Today we're going to take a look at PARTIS operating system. It's pretty cool overall, interesting, very interesting distro, in that it's based in Turkey by the Turkish government. Let's check this out, okay? So we're going to... Go down here, you should see now the Wikipedia page on Partis Operating System. Partis is a Linux distribution developed with support from the government of Turkey. Partis main focus is offices war related work, including use in Turkish government agencies. Despite that, Partis ships in several languages. It's easy to use and availability free of charge to spawn numerous communities throughout the world. There's two things, there's like a couple of things that surprised me about this distro. This part was started by the Turkish National Research Institute of Electronics and Cryptology, a division of the Scientific and Re-Technological Research Council of Turkey. In 2003, no less. It's this old distro. Actually. <laughs> and it started out as a Gentoo. Is a fork of Gen 2 Linux 2005. The current version of, four, of a fork of Debian and stable following release process similar to that of Ubuntu. So in other words, this isn't just a Debian overlay with uh, somebody's best programs they want in their, their distro and stuff like that. This is a fork of, of Debian that's got its own repositories and everything else it's very interesting in that regard so let's take a look at that's that now how do you get get a hold of this puppy so you have all this you can get started or take you down a little page you hit get started or you can go to here and download it either way here you can get some of the things that probably pre burns we'll look at those later when we get into it Alrighty. We will download now. You notice they have a downloaded ISO files, a normal XFC, and normal GNOME. They also have XFC backports and GNOME backports. What's the difference? Well, we're going to find out today because I downloaded both the XFC regular and the XFC backports version. ISO to see what the difference was. I know what they do. So anyway, we'll take a look first at the regular XFC so you can get a base of what we'll, we'll go now. I have that installed already on the computer. So we'll take a look at that real quick, won't we? Okay, now you should see my base install of Partis. It uses XFC, as I said, or, or Gnome, it or when you download. I downloaded XFC because I wanted to find out if it, if it took care of the Windows key problem in XFC automatically or if you had to do it yourself and it doesn't unfortunately it doesn't do that so you have to like basically reassign whisker menu over to the different key bindings so it work so you can use a super key like have super ESA for for a mouse oops I'm, I'm on the wrong, wrong keyboard sorry <laughs> so you got super E so you open the mouse pad and normally it opens things and like normally it opens the uh, the file manager. Also I didn't have NeoPetch installed, I had installed it myself with NeoPetch. Partis is Turkish for for leopard basically. That's why you see a bunch of leopards all over the place on this thing. Anyway, it's kind of messy leopard when it's up big like this, but anyway, yeah, Partis. Now, it uses a 5.10.0-25 uh, kernel on here, which is basically the one for Bullseye. And um, I'm not sure exactly why, because it's being taken from, from Sid. According to that, it's taken from the unstable version. So I'm not sure why it's just in the, sitting on kernel 5.10. That's the case, but 
Anyways, Bullseye's Colonel, basic Colonel for Bullseye. And yeah. So yeah, your packages eighteen oh three, which is pretty decent. Bash five point one point four. And SFC 4.16, so it's even using, not even using the most recent SFC version. In other words, I think it takes his wise a while to catch up with the, with what's happening in the, in the world. It's not, even though they use unstable version, the, the takes from there and other things, uh, ble bleeding edge type stuff apparently here. So it is what it is. More but I'm wondering if the back ports don't, don't, uh, so one thing I want to check is the back port installs better kernels and more up-to-date kernels and things like that. Some of these things, some of these oddities like the hold down just the control key and hit the minus key and the lower things. I think that might be uh, related to Turkish settings. I mean, specific Turkish, Turkish type things. They do a pretty good job of when you select English, most everything in English. Only a couple exceptions you have to look at when we do the install. So you'll see what that is when we get there for. You got that, and according to this, it's got 695 megabytes out of 8 gig, meg, gigs of memory. So it's using about that much now. H top, I think. I don't know if they have that written on here. Nope, it's not file. So it says I can do this. And the nice thing about this one, it tells you this, and you can double click it, triple click it, and you can copy it like normal, paste it, and, and there. And it's installed at its top. Okay, so 694, yeah, it's pretty close to what the uh, NeoFetch reported. Not too bad for HFC. Pretty standard, I think. You don't have a lot of ton of other things running. Apparently they don't have a lot of stuff running. So that's that, and that tells you a little bit about the base system the programs they have here are not to get accessories it's standard uh, standard uh, xfc type stuff in here pretty much and graphics and you got your gimp you brought a straw or cell image viewer drawing document viewer and document scanner internet gives you I added Telegram in there because I needed to post some stuff to Telegram occasionally. I uh, did these things, so I added Telegram in there. I had to install flat packs to be able to do that too. So yeah, it doesn't come with flat packs to install. You have to install it yourself and, and enable it yourself and all that good stuff. Firefox and Mail Reader. Mail Reader's Evolution. And yeah, your you know, web browser in there too. Multimedia, you got Audacious for music. And pulse audio volume control, VCL media player for watching your stuff and X F burn to burn things. Not literally burn, but you know, burn music off on your off of the CDs type stuff. The office, you basically got mostly it's all of your LibreOffice stuff plus evolution, time of your and dictionary settings. Yeah, most this is where most of your uh, XFC settings are at. And they have all these different things here, which most of you know you've seen before. System. We have more special things that, that Partis has made. They have a package installer, a Partis Power Manager, Partis Software Center, Partis USB Formatter, where you don't really use a part. We usually have a software center in uh, in XFC. It also has, uh, I think, it's either in the. So I think it's maybe in here. 
Uh, yes, Snapchat Packet Manager was the only thing that I knew of when I were in XFC in first time. Two our file manager. Now it's kind of weird how they do this, but they have a uh, file center called My Computer, which is right up here. Now, open it up, it looks like this. It can give you some of your basic system things. And you see my Ventoy is waiting there, faithfully waiting for me to go into it and install the next version of Pardis on there. But anyway, when you go and you click these things, like say you go to Downloads. Yeah, and then it opens up Thunar and gives you Downloads. How many downloads in here? So yeah, that's part of the issue. You go here and it gives you basic things. You hit Control H and it gives you the hidden files like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not sure why it does it that way, but at any rate, I'm not sure what this the my computer adds to it that that uh, can be added to just by going straight to Thunar, really. Sure, they have a reason for it, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, that, yeah, home trash and Vento, which is my well, sure. Now, I have a lot of nice, uh, I'll show you what they got in the basic. And so, I don't know if the back ports have anything different or not. Maybe same stuff, we'll see. Anyway, you go to here, desktop settings. You'll see some of the various backgrounds they have now. The one that came to install with it, you'll see when we install Partis on here. You have some part of themed part of stuff here. And uh, I think this one right here. And I had some that uh, Peter wouldn't like on here either. But uh, they have some that are nice. This is really interesting one. You probably want to pair this with a dark light theme if you wanted it because otherwise it looks pretty nice so actually I think that's the best theme part of theme they can get right there <laughs> but it's you probably want to pair it to the light theme in order to do that I got it on a dark theme so yeah just looking at it all you got this one here which I've uh, probably seen that before maybe that one, it's like Soviet Union or something there. China, one of the two. Yeah, balloons. Oh, there's a lot of balloons there, aren't there? It's about to cross our traffic in balloon land. <laughs> and that's what this is part of, so. And so those are all the different ones you can choose there. That's not bad. For your, your pairing with the dark theme. It's got a little dark in it, but it's got a lot of light too. So we'll leave that there. Close. Got Pardis 21 down there. So this is really time to install the new version of Pardis, which has the back ports in it new version I say it's all both, both new basically these came out in May of this year and the 21.5 AXFC no GNOME backports as well as a regular AXFC GNOME version it all came out in, in May of this year we're ready to install this this backport to see what the difference is plus it'll give me an opportunity to, delay, to take it through the install so you'll know what's going on there There's ACC back ports. We're going to do that one. Your normal mode. Here's where you select English or Turkish. And of course, I select English and does a pretty good job, I say, of making everything English they need to get around. Except you will find a little bit of a problem when you go to your uh, Wi Fi password for the first time. Because they use it, it defaults to Turkish keyboard. 
and you have to know where the turns things are in terms of keyboards it's a little bit different than some of the some of the uh characters and stuff like that most of it runs as you expect it to but there are some differences between the english and keyboard especially the symbols there's a default wallpaper you see so yeah uh, yeah you go down here and set your network i would show you what 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 exactly the problem is but then i'd have to kill you because you know my my Wi-Fi password, so we're just gonna. I'm gonna. I know what to press now. I do. Had to do it by process elimination last time. I remember how to do that. One. It worked. Hey, I got it right. Yeah. I got to start the keyboard right. All right. So we got our internet connection going here. We go here and we can hit install Pardis. There's a little bit of differences in how you do this. So you go next. But what I was going to say is that it, it, oh, look. Pick the right language for us this time. Yeah, English. What's the next one that has problems though? See, it, it defaults to Turkish since it's Turkish distro. So you gotta find English US over here. Right there. And it's like English US keyboard. So now. You can test out if you're unsure, but you also see over here it tells you what everything is. That looks like your keyboard, and you can go on with it, or you can test it out if you want to. So you go next. Now here's where you say you're, you're, I'm in Denver area, mountain time zone. So that America, Denver. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. Because it doesn't seem to be any way to, uh, to like put some alongside of some. Now, if you want, you could do a manually partition if I wanted to, probably. But I'm just going to erase the current one I have on there, put this one over it, and see what the difference is. So you can create swap partition, which I will. I'll get four gigs of data. You use your LMV, LVM, excuse me. You also encrypt it if you select that. You already do your manual partitioning, resize your system for yourself. You need the manual partitioning. And, or, and you also can install system with updates. Now, last time I didn't seem to do that, so I had to do updates. So I'm going to leave that blank. See what the difference is. But yeah, so you got all that, so we're going to leave this, it's going to automate, automate and install. Brace the disk and install system on which you did that pretty well last time, so I'll try to soon do it again. Like you should. So we'll go there. Next, yes, we know it's going to erase my disk and everything on it. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, now here. It's also another situation which is interesting. You put your name in, Rick. Apple. Now, Rick's my username. That's what I wanted to be for sure. Let's see what it says now. The password. Okay. You know, too simple of a password, it'll warn you about it.
Okay, it says your patch must have a big letters. If you go next, it'll say your password is not strong. Your password has big letters, must have eight characters, must have six characters, must have numbers. Which I would normally do if I was going to put it in for myself, but this is just a temporary thing and I'm set up and I'm just going to leave it that way. So you can say yes if you want to leave it that way, or no, you want to change it to make it stronger. So you can make star. Now here's where the funny thing is when it says username it lists out the same as your real name. I'm not sure why it does that. Probably a mismatch of uh, data input fields, but it does use the actual Rick for my username, not Rick Koppel, I think. Yeah, because it said Rick on the Thun Thunar. Yeah. So so everything let's get on here other than that and we'll go with it install and then it goes into creating your partitions on your hard drive and it will do everything else for you until it's done but it does take a while for the process now that's one thing i didn't mention is it in some a lot of people in my on Linux Saloon have um have tried to download this and they downloaded it but it takes a while. Matter of fact, to download these two assets, one was two point three gigs and the other was two point five gigs. So to download those two ISOs took most of all day yesterday to do. So yeah. So it's it got about to think about Anywhere between 200 and 400 kilobytes per second. Which is not very fast in today's world. Matter of fact, it's only about four to five, four to eight times faster than, uh, than uh, my modem was in 19, in the 90s, basically. So, yeah, it's not very fast. And it also does upgrades slowly, too. So you'll see that, and I'll probably cut out most of it. I'll cut out up most of this, so you don't have to sit here and wait for the whole thing to, to process. It takes a little while to do it since it goes slower. Probably cut off this, so. Probably cut off this, so now it's doing this part because it's copying, so that's why I mean, I wondered if. Did the upgrades or the same number of upgrades as what I had last night when I uh, did upgrades? Had any upgrade? So maybe it will, maybe it won't. Who knows? Anyway, this is fast because it's pulling from the primarily from the uh, the USB stick, my Ventoy stick, rather than that. Now clean package manager and doing doing some other things. So it's installing things too. And it should work, hopefully. Hopefully this will make it a little faster to do it this way than to do doing updates and everything. Find out what the process is. Any rate, there you go. Installing bootloader. Okay, installation finished, it says. Installation not complete, do you want to restart your computer and use a new system? Well, yes, I do now. So it's saying it took a while to download the ISOs, almost all day to download two ISOs. But I think it's because it's all the way on the other side of the world and they probably don't have the best servers. First thought was just some guy sitting in, his, sitting in a basement somewhere with a server... His lap, you need a lap, old laptop, his computer, his server. With that's why it's so slow. But I don't think it's the case now. I know it's it's, it's more than that. You also notice on here the little, all these little graphics. The other thing you'll see they're all in Turkish. The graphics you can't help that you know they're they're, but you don't really need to see that anyway. But I mean, if you want to know what it said? I guess you look it up and translate it. 
but at any rate. So, yes, yes, one of these to our computer. Okay, so it's going to restart the computer. And Vargas. We'll see what the, uh, oh, 6.1.0 Linux kernel. So I did update the kernel with the backports version. See now, if I wanted to install this on my framework, I couldn't install use the regular RxFC. I'd have to use the backports in order to do that. So. Okay, one thing it doesn't, it doesn't automatically take the uh, Wi-Fi settings and transfer them over, so you gotta reset it. Although now I use normal things, since this is using the right keyboard. Oh, well, oh, we... That's it. Okay, so now we got that connected. We're all connected in that. Ready to roll here. Okay, this application helps you print out this welcome screen. They do have a welcome thing, which is kind of nice. Little leopard up there. It doesn't look too happy, but you're happy, so a new system. Won't you be happy? It looks like it's the same basic. Uh, this is the one, the default one that it comes with out of the box. You may got all these other things. Just like that one. That's interesting. I would probably select the one I had on there though. I don't remember this one being on the other list. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, who knows. Well yeah, I knew it was on the other list. I remember that one now. Kind of spacey cosmic type thing. I kind of like the one that I don't see it now, but you right. Let me see what's happening for the time being. I wonder what it looks like. There it is. That's what I liked. So we got that wallpaper. And here next. And you got light and dark, obviously. So I'm going to select dark. And next. Yeah, display. I hear you say display. You can scale it up if you want to. Bigger, bigger letters and everything. And you scaled up. Change the panel size here. By clicking just to this number here. Make it bigger. Make it smaller. Well, where it was, basically. It's nice, nice, nice size, I think. You can also change your desktop icon size. This is set at 42. You can do the same. Click on it and then you use arrow keys to move it. Then you get bigger as you go over there. So, there you go. And then you hit next when you're done setting these things. And then you. You can add other keyboards if you want to. You can switch for using super space. But I'm just going to leave it in this keyboard. 
Playing in your panel. So you want to know what you have? English right there. So next. And this is just giving you information about the terminals. This is where application is super. And that brings up the menu if you just hit super key. And lock screen. Terminals, control alt T, standard. Show desktop, control alt D, change walls, workspace. Use control plus alt plus any of the up keys, the arrow keys. Control alt. Move add workspace, you can add insert or add delete. Alt delete or alt insert. No, no, no. Alt insert, alt delete, yeah. You know what I mean? Go to workspace is control plus F1, F12. I have to change that since I already get to my F keys. I have to use a lot of fingers to get my F keys. So change program, alt tab. Change window, super tab. Now I'm not sure what change wall, change program, change window means. Other than I guess if you have like several windows in the same program open, like say you have two or three file managers open. And three web browsers open. I'm assuming that means you, if you change, hit the change program alt tab, it'll change between the two programs. But if you want to change between the windows of the same program, it's super tab. So I assume it means if you split super plus back forth. Okay. And then you use support number if you want to call turkey and get support you can get through that <laughs> so but otherwise you know, close this out and it's the last time you see that unless you go into the menu and do it now i like said on menu now you can't hit super e with with very much either because the menu gets in the way now you can't hit super e but in this case but you have to basically make that go away and yeah mouse pad and so you know you set your key bindings and stuff so that it doesn't do that now what you can do is two things you can do if you want to make make it easier to use super key for things like that that is you can go to uh, you can press super key and you can go to keyboard. Then you go to application shortcuts tab. You go down and you find your super key by itself, super L or super ride. Either one will bring up the Western menu. You click edit. You click OK. As you press key, then you press Super D. That does a little freeze of Super Key to work for other things easier. Yeah, because what happens is when you press down on the Super Key, that's when the menu pops up. That's what you don't want to have happen. What you want to have happen is when you release the Super Key, then the menu pops up. Then that allows me to pull down the super key and press another letter that it activates that instead first. So, yeah, so go to super E. Or super R, we bring up the application binder. Super E, bring up mouse pad, but you see it's not popping up over there. Now, let's say you wanted to uh, make that change back so when you press super key like you used to, Brings up the menu without still not interfering with other keys. You gotta say what you do in that case. And that's you go to draw T. I'll increase size here so you get a better bit view of things. And we'll go uh, sudo apt install escape.
Okay. It's done an escape. It says been solved now. What to do is you type escape. Super. L. Equals. Super. L. E. Go ahead and you gotta enclose this in quotation marks. Either singular or double, I think. Oh, you also gotta put dash E there. I almost forgot to tell you that. So, yeah, so super now. You don't want any spaces at all in here. You do super L equals super L. That's what this means is if, so we set it for super L D, right? So it'll say that'll equal, just press the same effect you pressed on super key on it. Alrighty. So we did, now it's, it's active right now. So if you press down C, it does, on the super key, it doesn't, but if you press it up, down and up real fast, it pops up to the menu, just by pressing down on the window key. But, it will still allow you to bring up other keys to bind you that way that are attached super that way. Pretty cool, huh? So, yeah. Now, another thing I like to do is, um, let's see. Window manager. Because I, up here, keyboard tab. And you go down here where it says Alt F4, close window. And so I added that to, to Super Q. And that will make it so that, so that I can close out windows just to Super Q. The only thing is if you want to have it, uh, the escape thing work, Every time you log into it, you have to put it into your default key bindings, which I'll show you where those is. Just, just, just type in default application. No, no, no. Session does. Yeah, session startup. You hear the uh, application auto start. She's got several applications already started down there. Then you just add, click on here. And I press a menu fix. Fix menu. <laughs> you repeat the command. Yes. Okay. Oops, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if we have to close quotation there very well. So, and try the bottom. Let me get on there, will it? There you go. Edit that. And move over here. In and there you go. Now it should work. Anytime you reboot, there should work there. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, update process on this. See what the updates are on here. And when we go this route, I could do the updates to Software Center. Matter of fact, you can find out how many updates you have to Software Center easier in some ways. But I'm going to go ahead and just do it this way. Super sudo apt update first.
You notice all these back ports and other things to see here? They're all got this year mirror, which I assume is their artist's uh, version of what their code name for this is. Go ahead and see how slow it's going. It's currently running at 7,000. It's running at 119 kilobytes per second. 23 kilobytes per second. Yeah, it's kind of slow process on this thing. Updates are going to be slow too because of it. So I'll show you that in a little while. Anyway, you can tell how slow it's going to be when you do this update. In fact, it's probably way to do updates so all in nighttime or something. Maybe it goes faster if you do it in the middle of the night or something. <laughs> something like that, maybe. You never know. Not war. One lady I know that, that uh, on our Telegram group that, that uh, lives up in the Washington State area, she said she didn't have any problems and everything down on fast for her, but everybody else has had problems with it going slow like this. And I'm not sure what the difference is, what the problem is, other than it may be on the other side of the world for me. Maybe mine goes east or it goes west, west would be a short route there. Stuff like that. And we can have to get it. See how much slower the install would have gone if you had an update checked on it, right? Yeah. So anyway, this is sort of a rolling release in a way because it says it's supposed to be. I don't know how rolling it is. It all depends on how often they update their packages from SID to there. Maybe they have their own own uh, repository, which you can see are all centered in Turkey there. So that probably is part of the issue. Is this in Turkey on the other side of the world? And it's probably a slow connection and stuff like that. So, yeah. There you go. Well, we'll come back when it's done with the update and I'll tell you what it says. Usually updates are like snappy fast, you know, but not from Turkey, apparently. So we'll see what we got when we're done with the update. How many uh, applications it has to update. And we're back. And it's got 117 packages to be upgraded. Now on my list that uh, I did with last yes last night, it was 96 packages that had to be upgraded. Let's see if the software center gives the same okay. now remember this doesn't have flat packs in them until you install flat packs and Process about thing it does automatically install the part of flat pack no part of flat packs is needed for it to integrate with with the gnome store which I think is probably what this is probably their version or some of the gnome gnome uh, store but it doesn't look as nicely configured as what you expect it's kind of scattered and not divided very well. I mean, if you imagine your lines here, there should be a line here, a line going down here with all this, the most downloaded apps, popular apps, but I guess they're being, and yeah, your categories here. Plus you got your editor's picks, and you have your search, your search function there. Let's check out and see what kind of, what store, it's GNOME store or not. Yes, this is part of software center, is all it says. Yeah, I think it's their own creation for the most part of their own, their own, uh, thing. So, anyway, we have updates here. 
And it says we have 117 upgradable packages. But it is all upgrade. So you can figure, I don't know if it's any faster than this, but probably not. But it expects to be since it's using the same repositories, has the same issues. But you never know, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be a little faster. We basically just goes and gives you a terminal window. Where is the 85 megabytes? It's take a little while, but you'll see if it tells how fast it's downloading. I don't see a figure. See how fast downloads are happening. Oh, well, I'll let it download. I'll come back when it's done, all right? All right, we're back. Process just finished. It took 21.5 seconds. 21 minutes, 5 seconds to download. Just download all the stuff. And 118 items. So, yeah. Took a while to do that. More, more than a normal, a normal machine under normal circumstances. And, but... But the process, once we got past that, ended up updating and processing and uh, unpacking all the software and stuff. It went pretty fast since it's a pretty fast machine overall. So, process completed. Okay, it was completed, and it goes back to that. And you go and so see the installers and listed there. Tall. This there. So that's that. Now, if you do that, so now you do that, and so that's part of. So you got all these things down here. Let's go through this real quick. And it's your network connection. Right to computer line through when it's not connected. Should be giving tips when it's a little hover on there. Your volume, that's your volume. That is your power computer. That's your notifications. That's your time date. Now let's see if we can. Okay, I should probably go in settings to fix that. And then over here you got your log out. Your what kind of keyboard you've got. And you've got your maximize, minimize all open windows and show the desktop button. Of course, then you know, programs over here. And I assume you can probably put favorites or you can set so you can put favorites in there. If you wanted to put some ones in there, you can do that probably. What's the use case for this? Well, one from one of the first use cases. I show mine waiting for the downloads, back backups to download, and things like that. So much from Turkey. You want to live close to Turkey? Yeah. So, if you download the ISO, and the ISO takes a long time to download. Just know that the updates are probably gonna take that long to download as well, or at least you're gonna go slower. A little bit faster, I think, but not too much. So it's in the kilobyte range, so I don't think it ever reached up to megabytes in what I had in there. So keep that in mind. If you don't care if it takes a while, like you like to set backups going. I mean, uh, like I said, your upgrades, up, uh, your upgrade updates are going, and go do something else, that's fine. Just know it's probably what you have to do. All right, so then you stare and watch paint dry on your computer type thing. So, got that consideration. Otherwise, it's a pretty good system. 
It uh, had some some decent back ports. And uh, as we had, I can't see this, but I'm just going to check real fast. Okay, so it's using the Linux kernel 6.1.0. So I can run that on my disk desktop. Uh, I mean, my main download daily driver. I had mine too. I go into because of the download speed issue, but uh, yeah. And but that's really otherwise it's a nice system. It, it works for most people. And the lady who runs it on our Linux Loon group on Telegram is pretty happy with it. it does have some nice wallpapers. I'll grant it that. There's some there for everybody. If you like flyers, I don't like flyers. There's, there's ones you got for that. So that's part of this, I think. I'd recommend it for anybody who lives close to Turkey. Has download speeds, decent downloads. And doesn't mind the occasional oddity. Occasional oddity. That you may counter with the being from Turkey. Otherwise, it's good to go. It's a good system. I don't know how stable it is, but I think it probably will last a while since it's been around a while. About it going away or anything like that since it's got the government behind it, basically. I think it's uh, used by the government, apparently, a lot. So, there you go. There's partners for you. That all said, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button if you want to get notified of things by email. New downloads I put in. As well as, don't forget, and Linux Force be with you. Bye.